Hello everyone. In this video, we cover what designers need to think of when it comes to reliability, maintenance and repairability of the new products they want to develop. I'm Renaud Angeran and I'm joined by Andrew Armenovin. So let's go through these three concepts first. Reliability, what, in a few words, what is reliability, Andrew? Uh, Renaud, uh, good to be here again and good to see you. Reliability is uh, very different than quality. This is where we are trying to build a part uh, or product that is going to actually function for a uh, designated period of time, which we call it life of the product. Yep. Uh, maintenance, basically users might have to maintain their, maintain their product either preventively and we're gonna go through that later in the video or when it's down, when it needs to be repaired. So make it relatively easy, make it actually possible. And the, the third concept is repairability. So in a few words, what is that? Well, repairability is when you have a product, for example, uh, uh, an automobile, you wanna make sure to make it somewhat easy to repair for the user so they don't have to take their car, for example, for an oil change every single time if they don't have to, if they can't afford it. Uh, so make it somehow so that it's easy for the parts to be removed and uh, replaced. Yep. So now let's go through some important points that will help designers actually achieve this, uh, this objective. And the first one is you need to understand how the users will use your product, right? Uh, why is this critical? Oh, this is probably one of the most uh, critical elements of every pro product design. You must understand how your product is going to be used and you design it for that purpose. Yeah, and then and you also you can replicate it during testing, right? Correct. So you, it's very important to, uh, to understand that. The second one is as a designer, you might already have an idea how could the product fail? Uh, and you might want to do a risk analysis a little bit structured, right? So what is the most common here? What is the most common approach? Well, uh, during the design and development or what they call MPI phase, the most common uh, risk analysis tool is design FMEA. This is uh, FMEA stands for failure mode and effect analysis, and also FTA, fault tree analysis. These are two available tools that help designers right up front do risk analysis on their uh, overall design and determine what needs to be fixed uh, so that the overall design will be more reliable. Right. Identifying the, 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 the ways it could fade and especially the catastrophic failures, right? You really want to, to plan for them and, and, and do something to make them less likely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the next one is you develop your product all the way to manufacturing and uh, release on the market, you're going to want to test some of your products uh, to confirm that reliability is, let's say, not too bad, right? So Correct. what are the, the most common stages where you would do some testing? Well, the, uh, typically the best way to do this is right at the early stages of the development where you want to find the issues by accelerating the reliability tests and finding the issues early in the first uh, several uh, builds so that you can fix them in time to production. Yeah, absolutely. Making the product more robust, basically it means make it more, uh, more reliable, less likely to fail, uh, more tolerant of maybe um, fabrication of parts that are not precisely always intolerant and so on, right? Uh, Correct. Do you have maybe an example to, to, to share? I have, a, I have a perfect example. And I think that this is very important because uh, you can probably uh, design, uh, for example, a part that is going to function for a certain period of time. I do remember we had a fan that kept failing in our production. And we didn't know why until I looked at the spec and I realized that the specification actually had a temperature uh, rating of 
50 degrees C max. So the designer did not realize that the internal heat actually in the inside of the uh, uh, box could actually reach beyond 50 degrees C. And he picked a part that could not operate after 50 degrees C. So it's very important that whatever design specification in terms of operating temperature, in terms of operating voltage and current, you must design a part that is going to have certain tolerances for environmental changes. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, that's a great one. Next one is making the diagnostic of the failure easy. And I always take the example of the of, of cars that nowadays pretty much all the, the, the cars uh, that, are, that are sold have this kind of inbuilt diagnosis. Uh, and, and, and they will they will tell you, well, there's a problem here or a problem there, right? Is this something that a lot of products can do also? Yeah, I think this is a, a trend now. They are actually designing a diagnosis type of uh, uh, connector that you just connect this uh, device and the software is able to go and actually check uh, everything that is wrong with the car in mobile devices, for example, you can punch in a few codes and it will get into a software where it will test your device and tell you if there is an issue with the display or issue with a transmitter and so on. I think this is one of the best things uh, in the design in terms of the best idea. And I think that this should continue for pretty much every product. Right. And ideally the designers get the some of this data back so that next generation can uh, can uh, can take that into account and avoid Listen. these failures right yes um, planning for um, maintenance the so again let's take the example of the car is the the oil change every x miles or or, or every uh, every uh, what six months or i forget what it is we don't see that too often on, on simple consumer goods uh, but on, on uh, machinery and so on, it is more, more common, right? Yeah, I think uh, people must understand uh, in terms of designers as well as the users that maintenance is a huge part of using any product that you can't throw it away. You know, a car must last uh, 10, 20 years. And it's very expensive to repair, very expensive to replace. So maintenance is the main part of this thing. And, and maintenance, when it comes to reliability, it means that, okay, we can't really repair it, but we must at a certain intervals replace certain parts so that the performance and the reliability uh, of the, the car, for example, in this case, will continue. Yeah. When there is uh, a failure, when, uh, for example, a component needs to be replaced, make it possible, make it easy. So there's, there's been a lot of talk recently about some electronic brands making it uh, unnecessarily difficult, maybe, right? And, and, and have you seen more pressure uh, on designers to actually um, improve on that? I think so, yeah. I think that the, the new designs are a lot more robust in that uh, there, there are diagnostic, diagnostic tests uh, have improved that uh, maybe even early in the design, test engineering works very closely with the designers and they're able to find these types of uh, component failures or, or how you can actually replace the component, the ease of replace to, of these components is, is very important. It's getting much better nowadays. Right. And just to illustrate that and as a closing note, do you want to go and work on this engine right there uh, on the, the BMW on the left, where you don't have you don't even have space to to put a finger in? You need to basically remove everything, right? Uh, versus that uh, that old Toyota model, where um, people had much easier access to to everything, <laughs> right? So. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Uh, thanks, everybody watching. I hope it was useful and see you in the next video.